Hello and welcome back to Parkitect. In today's project, I'm recreating Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm, a Gerschleier dive coaster. So this project came to me after I saw a couple posts on the Reddit and a Facebook group of a user named Mooman82 who was making a Knott's Berry Farm recreation, and I felt like I I could do a recreation of one of their coasters, especially one of their newest ones would be hang time which would be um, their first dive coaster on the west coast so i was excited when this coaster was announced a while ago and i rode this coaster on opening day and i truly do love this coaster it's really cool the drops are great um the inversions are intense and it's just one of a kind even though well, there's mul there's multiple um drop coasters in the world, but having one in California for the first time is pretty cool, and it's a thing that they um, hold on to. Um, in this project, I did for the first time use some mods. So I use um, the Air Boss support pack for the first time, and I use the Infinity Coaster mod for the coasters to kind of match the cars because the ones in game are two cars, and I needed four cars per train. So I use those of the two mods I only use, actually no, I use three, and then Construction Anarchy is the other mod I've been using, but this is the first time using a, scenari a scenery mod, so I was originally going to try to do the supports all vanilla, and I did an experiment off screen and it didn't work out, it kind of was ugly, it kind of lost its charm, so I buckled down and I used the support pack, and using the support pack actually was the better choice. Um, as you can see here, I'm just here just making the blueprint of hang time. It's a very simple blueprint for hang time. It goes into, I'm not sure what type of turn the first one is called, but it's like, it's kind of like into a half he half loop and then goes down into like a high pin loop and then into a half loop into two corkscrews and into another half loop. So it's, I call it a ram's horn. So I'm just here building it on a sandbox map and then later transferring it over to a, a scenario custom map because I wanted to make it like a diorama like uh, Coaster B does. And it, it kind of, well this kind of runs into the same recreation steps as I did with my Big Thunder Mountain um, the diorama. So just here's the finished ride and t testing out what things are. I think it, it is translation translated pretty well over to for the layout. I mean the only thing that's kind of hard to copy is the first like inversion of the coaster because they're like really the first pieces of track are really close together. So here's a cut way or a fast forward part. I did the chain lift off screen because of a lot of redundant work of making supports and I was testing out some ideas and this is already on the scenario map how to figure out where things go, figure out where this fence is, and then building up a simple, like, I don't know, it's like a beach timber wood fence, and I kind of just did that. Um, there's already support work already placed in, kind of figure out where things should go. Um, the support pack is very useful in things like that. If you want to get realistic stuff out, it's pretty, really simple. Um, the technique I use for this recreation to get rid of the supports from the game where I used uh, pathways and then color them the same color as sand and then that kind of like blends in and kind of disappears it's a really cool technique you could also use tree stumps and maybe small bushes but if you have the um, non-collision mod that won't work so you do have to keep in mind in that depending on the mods you have installed that can conflict on what you're trying to do I don't have that mod installed because of that because I wanted to have trees and stuff get deleted as you put things down because if you imagine that having that and doing scenario play it basically the trees um well don't disappear they just kind of clip through so i have that mod not installed the only other mod would be i have is construction anarchy again and the coaster supports uh i have two coaster support mods actually installed i use majority of air bosses because his is very more versatile than the other one. I mean the other one's good too. I haven't used that one yet but I do like um, air bosses because it has three different sizes small medium and large. Just kind of do 
the supports, I kind of have to guess, I kind of copied the supports from Hang Time. Like I'm doing this one, this one giant support for the, the I don't know, I'm going to call it a pretzel. Yeah, pretzel inversion. It looks like a pretzel to me, so it's going to be called a pretzel inversion. I kind of copied the supports basically from it. I used a lot of reference material. I went to the park a couple times to kind of look at it in live. I think I got it pretty close. I'm happy with the project so far. Um, the project was a ooh, 22, 24 hour build uh, spread out a couple days. So I, I worked on like four, four to two hours a day. I kind of worked here and there. The most work was getting all the supports done. And that was a lot of grunt work. So you won't see a lot of support work in this video. I felt like that would be too boring to watch. But this video is a little bit longer, just to let you know that there's, we, you get to see some station building and some other details around. So I do build some other parts of the park around the area. This is like a small map, it's like 60 by 20, I think. I don't quite remember my, my measurements, but I pulled a lot of inspiration and technique from Coaster B because I've been watching his videos recently on his dioramas and they're pretty cool so I thought I'd give my hand at it and this is his original idea of making dioramas not mine so it's just a cool idea to kind of test my skill on something new. Here I'm going to do some more support work on this I don't know what to call this this inversion it's more like a very high peaked corkscrew basically um, the coaster builder in this game is very versatile to get to these type of elements. There's some limitations to it, of course. I mean, you can always try to use the track edit, but I've been hearing that the track edit has some um, limitations and bugginess, or I think, I, I don't know if the creator who made that mod is not supporting it anymore. I don't know. There's, I've been hearing some things, but I, I'm not 100% sure, sure what's going on there. So I, I haven't used the mod. I don't think I will, because I am very comfortable with the track edit as it is, the regular track editor as it is. I like it. You know, I know how to work with it. I've been working with it for a while. So, this, yeah, just simple things like that. Simple supports. The support system, how it works is, yeah, with the construction anarchy mod, it, it works just as fine. So you can still do the increments of uh, levels and stuff like that. And you can go on to the, the top grid of nine kind of have to be patient on lining things up, you kind of have to move the camera around and stuff like that to kind of get the angles because you can't mess up by, I don't know, not seeing the right angle, it looks like it's connected, it's opposite collusion. So just keep in mind when you're building with supports, it can be tedious, but it's also good to make a lot of copies and blueprints of your supports to spam them. Um, getting late here. Uh, here's the um, work on the sign for hang time. So I was looking at some pictures, and when I went on it the other day, I noticed that there was these, well, basically, I don't know, wooden walls near the entrance, near this uh, first piece of track that goes into the ram's horn, and I needed to set it back, and then add some curved pathway to make it more organic. And again, I like doing, I don't know, yeah, curved pathways really make a park sometimes better, ending. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to try to make the sign for it sign was interesting. I thought I did okay on its construction. Just finished up some of the, uh, I don't know, top beam parts of these fences with shapes. Again, shapes are my best friend. I also wanted to cover up, there is no beam on above this pathway, but I took liberty and just kind of covered up the uh, uh, the actual entrance sign from the ride. I, I don't, I think there should be a option to get rid of it. I don't think there is. There isn't. Um, but there was a way to hide it. So here's the sign. I know it's a surfboard and like waves behind it and the guy on a surfboard is the symbol. And so it, this is how I did it. So if I did shapes and then I did like a couple different circles and hand placed those in so no using grid. And I kind of had this looks like a sunrise and the ocean in the back. And then I did little bits little small spheres to make some of my waves and then a simple border 
that will re represent the surfboard. But no guy, because it's such a small detail, it really doesn't matter. So it's kind of how I did the thing. Um, I wanted to do Texas's hang time on it. And then I found out that the text engine or the text doesn't go small enough. And it was overhanging on it. So I completely ignored it. It didn't add it. Kind of loses its charm. I wish the letters could go smaller. But hey, it is what it is. It, it still looks good. Here's on to work the on the station, and I'm doing a like a wooden strut work on the entire bottom of it, like it would be like a beach house or something. That's kind of what the station is designed after. It's designed after like a I don't know a wooden shed with metal roof, and then it kind of represents a more of a I don't know a lifeguard stand to be exact. That's kind of what it's modeled after. It is very fortunate for being in California that most coasters stations are wide open, airy, there's really not confined spaces versus like another theme park, let's say in Dollywood or somewhere it rains a lot, they're more enclosed stations. So I do appreciate having these open type of stations, kind of gives it a different feel. Over here I'm going to try to input the control. Yeah, the control building for hang times where the operators are watch the roller coaster and do all that stuff. Um, and then planning on to do some of the beam work for the station's uh, diag roofs. There's two of them that overhang on each other. There's a small set and there's a gigantic one that sits on the entire length of the station. I didn't mention before, I did do a different cover of the station. You can tell there's a gray part that's roofing up on top. And then I added yellow borders to simulate the, um, the caution lines on it. I had done this to some of the coasters before on like my other playthroughs and stuff like that. I think it's a cool way to do it. Instead of using um, what's it, the coaster station cover mod from Airboss as well. So there's different mods that you can use to kind of say But I, again, I like to keep in the the vanilla scenario scenery as possible but this was the exception was using the uh, new support not new support mod but the, the support mod that I've never used before so it's kind of new to me here I'm trying to figure out roofing for this station kind of very simple just simple 45 45 that's not 45 I forgot the angle. Regardless, I'm gonna figure out where my angles and roofing should go, and figure out beams where it should go. Again, all this is off of grid, so this is more off of or construction anarchy. All these borders you would not be able to do yourself if you had vanilla uh, park attacked. But don't be afraid to install construction anarchy. It's a good mod. You just have, it takes some practice to use it, like any other thing that's new. Um, so yeah, so just adding some simple supports to kind of get the feel of it's like iron truss and then wood, because that's what it is, it has iron and it's wood, things like that. Very simple. I think this coaster could also work really well in a campaign level if you had it like without the scenery. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So just more, more supports. Um, the other things around this diorama, I do I get to work on the back building of Calico and some office buildings off to the side. And then I worked on a restaurant. That's, I think, the barbecue restaurant. You won't see that in this video because I cut, I edited it out. It was a lot. This is already a lot of video on this, um, yeah, this run through because I didn't want to make this like an hour long again. And this is already pushing it to be 26 minutes long, yeah. So, you will see a more better um, look at it after I do a live tour later on. Toward the end, I will do a live uh, tour. Tell you what I like and what I don't like about some of the aspects of it. But most of it, I do like all of what I did with this ride. The coaster mod really brings this together more because they do look like the uh, the cars from Hang Time. I really appreciate the person who worked on this. I think his name's uh, Distance at D I S T A N T Z Distance. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, but he's he's made a couple coaster mods or 
train mods, technically, because that's what they are. They're just train mods. That was added in the last update was the ability to do train mods. And he's added some pretty cool stuff. And I was browsing and I'm like, I can make hang time with this. And that's what really spurred it on. And then when Moon Man started his recreation of knots, I was like, okay, this is now I have to do it. It's just one of those things. I might do another recreation, maybe uh, my, my a Ghost Rider, maybe, but Moon Man's already done Ghost Rider, but I might do Ghost Rider again. Um, I want to maybe do other recreations of something. I also have other maps in, in a line to do in some more scenarios. Um, speaking of scenarios, um, there was a scenario that I stopped working on a while ago, uh, Hyperion City. I am going to release that very soon just to finish it. There won't be a video on it because I don't think I don't feel like there's enough material to showcase. So I'm going to quickly finish up and then finish up the scenarios goals and then release it by hopefully next week. When you see this, yeah, by next week it should be out. So keep an eye out on my 14th campaign. Then I'm going to work on my 15th campaign and that could be that's gonna be themed maybe to not sure yet I won't tell you what it's gonna be themed but it's gonna be themed on something cool I think I've been thinking about some ideas and some other scenarios I have a list of scenarios that I can work on but Hyperion City should come out next week um, speaking of the sign the, here's a sign that I'm gonna work on this is um, on side of the rights building it's called K20, so this is for the date of Knott's Berry Farm's opening, 1920. So that's why it's K20. I didn't know this until I researched it and I asked uh, one of my brothers, like, hey, what does this mean? And they're like, oh, this is what it means. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Because Disneyland has their number two. D55 is their number. So that's Knott's is, is K20, so it makes sense. Over here is the gift shop that is attached to Hang Times. So this is where you can go and buy your uh, pictures after riding the ride because it has a photo spot on the ride. And it's where you can buy merchandise at the time, jackets, and postcards, and candy, and stuff like that. It's a simple, I don't know, gift shop that they added. Um, I'm trying to remember, the, there was two rides that were in this spot before. Actually, there's three rides. This spot in Knott's Berry Farm has had a couple changes. The first ride was the first ever um, inverted steel coaster, I think it was called um, Corkscrew. So it was the first ever Corkscrew roller coaster. That was in its place for a long time. Then that got uninstalled and bought by another park and sent somewhere else. I don't remember the park's names, but I know that it still runs today. That was replaced by a coaster called Boomerang, which was, I think, a Vacoma uh, shuttle Corkscrew coaster. So it goes into a ram's horn into a loop and then back through it again. And that was there for a long time, about I think 20 something years. And then Knott's announced they were going to retire it and replace it with a new roller coaster by Gerslayer. And they did. And it, it was a good addition because Hang Time does support more riders than Boomerang did. And that is better for Knott's in the long run basically because they do want more ridership on their rides um speaking of boomerang boomerang did get purchased and sent over to another country i think china or japan i don't remember the which one but that's already gone and that's already being re rebuilt somewhere else so both rides corkscrew and boomerang still exist it's pretty cool that they're still running so i think hang time was a good addition to the park it is a pretty up there in the thrills to like Accelerator. Accelerator is pretty thrilling, but the addition to this area was worth the I think 10 million they spent on this ride. I think I don't don't remember the price tag for this uh, for Hang Time. But speaking to next year, because Knott's Berry Farm turns 100 next year, and they're bringing back some old attractions and announce a new attraction for next year. It's called, I think, Fairy Tales. So Fairy Tales was there like an old attraction from a long time ago and they're 
bringing it to the 20th century or something. I don't know. It looks, it's interesting. I'll just keep an eye on something like that. But again, I'm a theme park buff as well, so I do keep tabs on things like this. I should be talking about more of my technique field here, but just ramble about <laughs> Knott's Berry Farms history. Uh, but here is just finishing up rail work on this 50 style building. And then there's windows, the roofing, a darker color because it felt it was too light. And then added this like billboard off crop thing that says boardwalk. So I used the letter, the new text system, and then cubes again to kind of give me those border sides. Yeah, things like that. It's good to copy things from real life, it's easier to design than building something from the top of your head. But yeah, that's why I think doing recreations every once in a while is good for you. So it gets you into the design aspect and then you can go from there. And then you can think of something to do on your own, things like that. Yeah, very simple. It says boardwalk. I wish we could change the font of the signs, but I'm content with it. Right now you can do a lot of things with it. So I just built the top of the, I don't know, this tower it has some blue accents on it. And then it has this like yellow wave on it. And I remember I had to make this yellow wave. You'll see in about maybe a couple seconds. But yeah, it was a very simple build. And I think it worked out very well in my recreation so far. That reminds me, I could, I, I did maybe do some redesigns later on in my off-screen playthrough because I recorded a this is a long build no not as long no Big Thunder was my longer build this one wasn't as long this was kind of a short build so I was kind of surprised I could I was able to do this quite quickly again I don't know I think it looks good looks wonderful and then here comes the little bit of the uh, circles to kind of see these like yellow waves Kind of like pushed them together. It kind of looks like swirls. I don't know. It it looks right to me. I don't, there's there's different techniques you could figure out with the shapes. Again, shapes are very very versatile. I've been thinking about maybe using the advanced shape mod, but again, I don't want to use mods because I feel like mods sometimes squashes the creativity when you have something in front of you. So I, I'm probably not going to do that. Maybe not. So, okay, regardless. But here's more air conditioning vents that I'm gonna do for detail. Um, it's never never wrong to do air conditioning vents because air conditioning vents are always a good thing to do. Here comes the, the tour, we're toward the end of the video already. So this is going to be the giant like sunset mural on the back of Calico Mine Train. So I knew that I needed to build it. There was two ways I could have gone with this. I could have gone with just doing cubes and just coloring the walls different colors to simulate sunset. Or I could go a little bit further depth into it and build a sun, some waves, and maybe some purple clouds. And so I kind of lined myself up with different lines of color. So your yellow, bright yellow, orange, to purple kind of have it like this and then build a sun out of shapes and then I figured out I need to make some waves out of shapes so I did that took I think the whole build was 35 minutes of placing shapes over and over again and then kind of giving that I don't know wave look everything was hand placed because I didn't want to use the grid the grid kind of confines you to a spot so doing it like this does showcase I don't know a better I don't know detail if you can say just just the more better work so I, I just made a copy I placed this a whole bunch of times it was out space so I had to go figure out to put in the space and fill them in so that's what I did by hand so it did look different per wave chunk because when you do a pattern it kind of you can sign and see the pattern kind of repeat itself down the line so adding different I don't know intervals of design makes it look organic if you want to say yeah organic that's the word. So simple. There's the uh, waves. It looks like waves. I didn't build it behind the uh, shed. 
infinite need to because it's behind the shed. And then on to build a sun. And I made some off circles for the sun rays, a little bit bigger behind it. Yeah, that's very... I think this looks pretty cool doing the mural this way. And oh yeah, over here, there was the angle part of the walls and I wanted to hide that more into like maybe like clouds or something. So I did purple clouds off to this side where the shed is because I think that's how the mural is. I kind of looked at some pictures and I looked at it at part two a little bit. And it kind of matches the mural. It's not perfect. Oh, I didn't realize I did this too. I Oh, I recolored it. Okay. I made smaller sections of color. So this is going from dark yellow, yellow to brighter yellow into orange and then purple. Just to kind of give more of a gradient. Yeah, that looks better now. I, I forgot I did this. That was a while ago, the build. But yeah, hang time. This was an interesting project to kind of copy things from the park. And I took some liberties too, though, because of what the game's limitations of size and things like that. Like, I know that Hang Time is actually built diagonally up against Calico, because I was looking at Google Maps. And yeah, that's how it goes. So, you'll. On to the live through a uh, tour of, the, of Hang Time. I'll show you some key features here and there. And. Yeah, onto the uh, live tour. Okay, welcome to the live tour of Hank Time. So, on to some of the uh, key features. So, if you remember from the video earlier, or the time lapse, that the main entrance is out of the uh, gift shop. And I did later on made a new. Um, depot and I moved the depot into the calico building in the back. Some key features that I didn't show on here. So here's the hang time. Let's uh, ride it before. Let's see here, where are we gonna ride? Nope, nope, yes, perfect. Here's the first drop into the first inversion. There's five inversions on this coaster. There we go. Yeah, this, I think it turned out really well with how everything looks, especially with all the supports in place and all the little details. Yeah, these guests scream a lot, and it's at um, extreme excitement, and I think a very high intensity, so not a lot of people go on it, so when I had the guest settings for it, <laughs> I made them like intensity rights more. So yeah, it this will be on the workshop soon too, right after release of video. Yeah, let's see here, um, oh yeah, this is cool, I did these little things, these are like, um, these are gears inside a circle, so it looks like vents spinning. So it was a feature that I made up, and I think it looks pretty cool. On to some more details. So office building. This is like part of another building over here. I'm not sure if this is for a theater or something. Um, over here is the barbecue restaurant. There's a couple restaurants actually in here, so I just kind of built this off to the side. The guests actually have to walk through it from the back, but they're not allowed to. I had two more rides. Uh, wipeout. And their Sky Cabin ride, which actually has the K on top. I think it looks okay. But this is it. Hang time. My recreation. It will be on the workshop for you guys to kind of play around with and kind of look around and see some things. So yeah. Well, I will let you guys go. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.